All right, you guys, we are back. You got Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Smith. And we are revamping our countertops, all right? We're doing this in three of our bathrooms. We have two and a half baths. All of our countertops look like this. Um, we have been revamping. As you can see, this is already painted black. We have new hardware um, on this. But we're going to redo the countertops using the Gianni countertop paint kit. And we're going for this color. When we're finished, it's going to look exactly like this. Disregard this. That's just a sponge, y'all. Um, it's going to look like this with the specs. This is the Bombay black kit. Um, it has literally everything you need. Open this up. It has... The paint, it has the primer, it has all of your um, sponges, your roller brushes. We've already um, opened it. It has the, the handle. Uh, this is the other brush. It has a sponge. It tells you exactly what to do. There's instructions. There's a little test sheet in here. And literally all of these are going to make up the specs that you see in this countertop. So literally everything that you need is in this kit now we decided to go ahead and do a tutorial because we have the integrated sinks and i did not see any youtube videos showing how to do the countertop with the integrated sinks so not only are we going to be painting this we're going to paint inside the sink bowl as well so i'm super excited about this a little nervous um first we already cleaned this it tells you in the instructions everything to do but i'll tell you what we did so far before we start painting this one uh we cleaned it really really well using a um i forgot what it's called but it's it's the sponge with like the coarseness to it kind of like a brillo pad or sos pad um and then we taped everything off we taped down here in this um inside the sink that little stopper portion of it and i'm gonna tell you how i got it so perfectly round i put the tape on top and then i used an exacto knife to cut around it and then we're not going to remove this not because we're lazy just because it's not our niche okay so we just taped it up really really good to avoid getting any paint on it and then we taped around the edges it tells you with the kit to take a foam brush and do the top edges first the top and the corners then take the roller and do the rest of it and then of course on the inside of the sink bowl we're going to also paint that using the foam brush and another thing that we learned during the process and they told us to make sure that you go about removing some of the caulk yes. that is in the lines of these corners many times it's caulk right here in this corner caulk right here and what we learned downstairs is that if this caulk is not removed sometimes the first coat doesn't stick properly so as it paints on there you can kind of see it slowly revealing whatever color the caulk is underneath so on this one we remove the caulk that was inside so hopefully it sticks better and that way we can uh you know give it a nice good finish yes absolutely so we're about to get to work um this video will be a little bit spaced out because you have to start with the base coat which for us is going to be black then you have to actually wait eight hours before you do the specs with the sponge and the clear coat um, and those are each four hours apart so it's going to be very spaced out but we wanted to show you the before and we can't wait to show you the after that's right all right guys so this is what it looks like with the first coat this is the black primer coat um, as you can see when it dries it's like a matte finish um, for now here in the sink is still wet so you can see that and around the sink is still wet but so far it looks really really good we're gonna uh, put another coat on top of it you can see some areas in there but um other than that this is just the, the first coat and it is recommended in the instructions that you let it dry for a full eight hours before we do the next step so just wanted to show you guys and we are out and we'll show you the next step all right so this is how it looks guys it dried overnight we love it it's like super matte dry black but we're gonna go ahead and show you the next steps we literally are just following the instructions the instructions are very very clear so we're not going to go through all of the instructions but um go ahead um 
we just took our three colors because there's step two has three colors. So step two has three steps, if that makes sense. And so we have our three colors in bowls. Okay, they said paper plates. And we cut our sponge, that round sponge, into four pieces. You'll see that in the instructions. And then now we're just going through dabbing. Okay, so he's dabbing with the, it's like a, I forgot the exact color. Pearl, Pearl. mica yeah. is what it's called. Um, then there's the black onyx. So after he dabs, and you see he's just kind of going in a flow. You'll read that in the instructions. Um, he's going to do this over the entire sink. In the sink bowl as well. Then I'm going to go behind him. Do the exact same thing. With the black onyx. Then we're going to do the exact same thing. With the bronze. Now I'm going to tell you. Um, as I stated in the beginning of the video. We're doing three bathrooms. And so we've actually already started the other two. Since I started recording in this bathroom. Uh, I wanted to keep the video consistent. Um, which is why I'm in this bathroom. That bronze scared us a little bit because, you know, you're going from just black and white to this bright bronze color that you're adding in last. And it kind of made us nervous. We're still a little bit nervous about it. It's not completely dry, but we're going to show you. So let us finish this um, and then you'll see how we blend all three colors. All right. So one thing that I wanted to add is what Marcus is doing right now. Going alongside the edges, he put broke off a little piece of the sponge and put it on a sharpened pencil. And that allows him to do the edges as well as get in the corners in the back of the sink. Y'all, pay no mind to the cabinet. That isn't paint. That's just something else that dripped on it. I have to clean it. So, that is what he's doing. I wanted to show that. Alright. Now, as you can see, the white is all done. And she's already pretty much did the, the bulk of the dabbing with the black. And you can kind of scale it based on how dark or bright you want it to be. So, in other words, if you wanted to have more of the pearl popping out, then you may go a little lighter on the black if you want it to be more black dominant as we do then you can go a little heavier on the black because basically they want you to take the sponge and drain it off a little bit in other words we have a cardboard that we just kind of let drain itself or you know so that way we're not blobbing it on there or you can do like she's doing right now take that sponge kind of rub it up against the edge or whatever container you're using and that way it's still heavy on the black because we want the black to be more dominant in this bathroom so you can just kind of scale it and you'll see how the bronze looks we'll show you a glimpse of other bathrooms and this one we're going to go light on the bronze so that it matches the decor versus heavy on the bronze if you know it if it kind of offset the restroom but we will make sure that we go through all of the steps so you can see what works best for you and uh yeah that's how we do yeah absolutely you guys we just wanted to show you like as you can tell it's a drastic difference I'm about to go back here through this edge with a pencil um, so that it's not so white in that corner. I'm just looking for the pencil. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, this is literally, I think, one of the simplest and easiest and funnest projects that we've done so far. So just wanted to show you the process. We're about to blend in the third color and we'll show you what that looks like. Absolutely. And I'm glad she said fun because that's what you want to do. Have some fun with it. Don't try to be too perfect. Let it just, you know, kind of guide itself. So as you flow, just go because you'll be able to correct. You'll be able to come on with more layers if you felt like the first layer wasn't how you liked it. And then the finished product will be just fine. So stay tuned. Talk soon. All right, guys, so it's time for the last color, which is bronze. Look at this, y'all. This is why we were afraid of the bronze when we opened the can. Because look at how dark it is. I mean, look at how dark the sink is and how light this is. You know, they threw in the mix of bronze. So this had us very, very scared, especially in this bathroom, because it's really not going to match anything for the most part. But we're going to do very, very, very 
light coats. Right. Just so we can show you how it's working. Because I was tempted to not do any bronze in here. But she was like, nah, let's go ahead and give the people, you know, what they want. So we're going to give you what you want. Go very light as she see, as you see. Just, you know, boom, boom, boom. Spotty. Yeah, we're not going to overlap these yeah. like we did in the other bathrooms. Literally, I'm just going to do it very, very, very light. I'm even going to, on this one, I'm rubbing it on the cardboard that I have on the floor. I have to get past you or go around you. Oh. Yeah, I'll go around you. I'm going to rub it to really make it as light as possible. I want these specs to be as light as possible because they're really dominant. And that way you'll still be able to see hues popping out, you know. Exactly. And certain things, of course, will agree with it as we uh, finish the restroom. But, you know, move at your own pace. And basically, understand if you have a color scheme already for your bathroom or in mind, then let that color be the dominant one. So do it how you want to do it. You know, literally, we can all have the same kit, but it can all look a little different based on how you put your spin on it so go with your flow but we just want you to see how ours is going and some people get even more creative and do little streams and veins and yeah. all of that so if, that, if you're good at that and you want to do it do you but we just wanted to you know show you the simplicity of it show you each phase so hopefully you can uh Get your DIY project on the road. Save you a little money. That's what we're all about. Helping people save money, increase their cash flow. And if you can create a, a fun day out of it, then go for it. Absolutely. All right, we're back. We let this go ahead and dry beyond this yeah. required time. And now we're coming with the third layer. Now, inside the kit, they have a top coat. And based on what we were seeing on the reviews, we chose to stick to something that we were more familiar with because we felt it would give it more durability than the top coat that came with this particular product based on the reviews we saw. And what it is that we were familiar with is pretty much a resin mixed with an epoxy. And we'll link it down below so you can, you know, grab it if you desire. And it was like a half gallon of what was the name of it? What was that brand? Stone, Stone Coat. Stone Coat Epoxy. And it comes as an epoxy as well as a resin. But we've used that before. We used it on top of some contact paper inside of our kitchen. And it hardens like glass. Like literally, you see this bucket right here? When I left a stick in that bucket, I was able to pull the stick out. And all of the epoxy and resin stuck like a plate. And I had a brand new bucket all over again, but that's how hard it is. Like you can pour water on it. It's no biggie. If you waste some on it, it's going to clean up. So it heals and cures like a glass. So instead of us taking a chance with the top coat, we wanted to go ahead and use that inside here because we had some left. And that way we can pretty much ensure that it's going to have a hard finish and not run into some of the things that we saw people ran into on some of the reviews. So we'll link that below. That's something for you to consider if you want to have a good, solid, strong finish. And it looks great. As you can see, she's painting inside the basin, the bowl, and it just makes it glow. It makes those different textures. And we'll show you some little clips of our, the other bathrooms as well, but it just gives it a glow, a good shine, a wet look. And then we'll just kind of let it dry. We also will hit it with a little bit of the heat gun and we're kind of still testing that part out because we had to use the heat gun when we were doing our kitchen counters, but we were popping bubbles with this. It's not really a lot of bubbles in it as it was when we were doing our kitchen. So we're going to see how it heals and, uh, you know, give you an inside look of how it looks, but it's definitely something we feel is going to turn out great. As you can see, it's starting. You see the shine, like you can literally see the reflection in the bowl because of how shiny it is. And this hasn't been touched yet, so this is still, this is still in its dry form. But now you see, she's just using a paintbrush. We did have a roller as well that came along with it, and when we compared how it looked with the roller versus with the brush, we just kind of both preferred the brush due to. How you're able to just lay it on there smooth. It just had more of a consistency to it. Less uh, spotty in terms of how the brush was doing. So 
this is what we chose to do. But definitely do what you feel works for you. Yeah, you guys, with the Gianni um, kit that we purchased to do this, the top coat, we kept looking to see if it had epoxy in it. And it didn't say epoxy anywhere in the ingredients, which is why we decided against it. Now, some of the reviews that we were seeing on YouTube in update videos, it was showing that they had paint to peel in different areas. And I was wondering, how is that possible with the entire kit, you know, being put on the cabinet? And I kept seeing people in the comments asking, you know, did you put epoxy on top? And at that moment, you know, we made the decision, let's just go with the epoxy, the same epoxy resin that we use for our kitchen countertops. And again, we'll link that in the comments so you can see exactly what we're talking about. Epoxy is very, very thick. It's very thick. It's very sticky. It is a mess. So make sure you protect your counters or, or your cabinets. Make sure you protect your floors because you'll see in that first video that we did where we explained this, it is a sticky hot mess. So you want to be really, really careful with it. As you can see, I'm just doing even strokes. Even strokes, um, I'm dipping it in the bucket. Then I'm just kind of twirling it around. You don't want it dripping too much, but again, it's very, very thick. So I just get it to where it's not dripping. And then I just go to the sink and pick up where I left off just doing even strokes. Inside of the sink bowl, I just went in circles. So you guys got to see that when the video first started. Um, I just went in circles around and around really, really carefully. We took out the plug that goes, um, that, that clogs or that plugs the sink. Um, and when I finish with the entire sink, what I also do is I just take a paper towel and I wipe off that metal to make sure no epoxy. You want to make sure it does not go down your sink. That is another reason why. You just want to, I mean, it's already thick, but you just want to do even layers. Don't rush it and don't let it drip to the best of your ability. Um, as far as the edges, because it is going to run just a little bit off of the edge. As far as these edges right here, we're just going to take the roller and finish that up. So I also wanted to show you really quick how I do this top part. So I just take my brush. I do a small amount. Then I take a little bit more epoxy. I'm just twirling it around. And then I go up. This was the best approach to me because I already did this part of it. It was easier for me to just go up, even strokes. So then I'll do another little part and I'll go up. Again, it's really thick. You want to make sure... You know, you're applying a little bit of pressure, but not too much. And I think it's going to turn out gorgeous, honestly. So, all right. So that's that's pretty much all we got. We're, we're showing you all the details here. And we, we actually taped off and draped off our other cabinets. On this one, we didn't, but we do recommend it. So if you have a cabinet that you want to protect, Tape it off, drape it off, use the trash bag, uh, a sheet that you don't care about, whatever you got to do if you're doing it in a bathroom area. So that's all we got until we show yeah. you the finished product. I don't know why we didn't tape off these cabinets, but we need to yeah, hurry we up just, because we, we just stained these cabinets yeah. last year. So Right, I, we jumped straight in trying to give them this video. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what it was because we had the other ones covered up. I noticed it as you was paying. But y'all get the point. So hopefully... uh. This resonates and helps someone out until you see the next video. All right, guys. So here is the finished product. This is what it looks like. Now, okay, little disclaimer. Uh, I wanted to point this out. If you look really close, there's a lot of little circles in here. You may be able to see it. You may not be able to see it, but it turned out with a lot of 
little circles in here and we kept trying to figure out why it dried that way okay um and with a lot of research what we discovered was because we used the epoxy opposed to the top coat that came in the kit apparently there was some type of like a conflict of the materials i mean that's the best way that i can describe it and so that was kind of causing these little bitty circles to uh come up in here and that's how it dried yeah and it's actually still hard because if you know how that epoxy yeah. is it's hard as a brick and i personally you know was okay with the circles but of course if you expect it to be flat and flush that's what you want so when you come back to it and you see circles it, it feels like a disaster so we was debating on if we we're going to keep it if we we're going to sand it down but if i was to see this somewhere else like we do a lot of open houses if i was to see this somewhere else i would have appreciated the texture in it and just said you know what this look all right. So we decided to at least start putting stuff on it, decorating it. We did all three bathrooms. So we kept it as is because it is still rock solid. It looks wet at all times just because of how the epoxy resin cures. But, you know, definitely do how you feel you want to do. And then if it turns out a little less than how you wanted it to, you can make the decision on whether or not you want to keep it because you still like it or switch it up but we just wanted to be transparent to let you see the imperfections but i like it personally yes and here's the thing you can see the circles on this part but in the actual sink it's smooth there's like literally no circles in the sink maybe like up here i think i seen one but for the most part the inside is smooth so again um, it was, I guess, some kind of conflict, and we did do the research for you already on the front end. If you don't like the circles um, in the material, you can just uh, use an electric sander, sand it all down. Uh, you may end up having to put a little bit more of the acrylic paints on there and then using the top coat that came in the kit. Keep in mind, the only reason why we even did the epoxy resin instead of the top clear coat that came with the kit is because of all of the reviews. All of the reviews were saying that it was starting to peel in areas and that it didn't hold up. So that made us say, well, we know how good the epoxy resin hold up because some of you guys remember our kitchen remodel and the epoxy is holding up absolutely fine. We haven't had any problems whatsoever. So maybe going forward, opposed to um, using a different brand, Stone Coat does actually make a... Um, uh, countertop and sink uh, kit as well is just a little bit more expensive you may just want to stick with one brand opposed to mixing two brands together so we wanted to show you our imperfections but overall you know again I personally I wasn't a big fan of all of the circles um, I wasn't a fan of all of the circles however uh, Marcus loves it maybe with one of the bathrooms we may sand it down uh, maybe we may keep them I don't know but for now, we're decorating all of the sinks and we're just keeping it moving. And, you know, it looks really, really good. You really can't see it unless you're really close up on it. And the circles are so consistent that, again, it looks like a design. So, hey, that's all we got. Yeah, that's it. Hopefully you like it. Let us know how yours turns out if you decide to do it. But it definitely uh, added some improvement. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Signing out.